Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of this making a full stack shopping website tutorial and in this video we will be setting up our backend server. So far now we have not set it up any front end, no nothing like that but we are just you know first of all making sure our everything has been set it up then we can make files whatever we need accordingly uh, to our needs okay. So let's open up our Visual Studio code again. And before, as we saw, we had set it up over Tailwind CSS. Now we will set up our Node.js server in the server folder, okay? So, yeah. Let's go to the server folder and in here, uh, we will just say cd server in one of the terminals. Like I told you before, we need to have two separate terminals. One for the client section and one for the uh, server section. So in here, we will say npm dash y in it so this will initialize an empty node.js package or json uh, file if you click enter here what is going to happen you can see we have an empty package or json if you don't have a package or json you cannot install any no javascript dependencies what are dependencies well basically dependencies are some kind of like you know some code that someone has already written for you so you don't have to write that by yourselves again okay it's just like you know someone is helping out you with something so we will be using few helps from few people that will make our node.js journey much more easier so first help that we are getting is called as express.js so express.js works as a what do we say as a server so what is expert what it what is meant by server so basically you make apis like you say uh, if someone make a post request to slash uh, create user uh, his data will be uh, we will get all of his data in the backend server and we will uh, save that data in some database like a mongodb or mysqli mysql actually so we will save that data so basically without the uh, backend like express.js user cannot really much do anything because we need to make rest apis so we will do that using the express javascript so let's get started here we will need to type npm install or i i for the shortcut and now here we will type first of all express because we want the express dependency express module uh, in order to you know make a server and then we need few more things okay i will be explain all of the things one by one so we got the express uh dependency and then we need a dot env all right so we need dot env dependency what is dot env dependency well, we need to create .env files. Uh, they are like the environment variables. What it? What do we mean by environment variables? Let's say you are, you know, uh, you're using a same, a same variable in many uh, files of your backend. Let's say you're saying site, your site name is called the elderly. Uh, site name is called elderly in uh, like ten of your different files. You you need to say elderly. You elder, know. No, let's not take an example of Eldoni. Let's say you are having some a password. Okay, the password is very complicated, and you need to you need you have ten files that you will say okay if password is equal to this then let the user login. If password is equal to this then let the user login. You have to say in ten different files. Are we just going to write that complicated password ten times? Well, no, you are not going to do that because in the future if you want to change the password, you will have to change it in ten files what we do in that case we will just say process.env.password we will just save anywhere a variable in the env file with the name of password and the value e so that's why env is used it, it lets it actually access the env variables so that's about the env then we will get the mongoose mongoose is actually a dependency that lets it lets us uh, you know talk with the mongodb database it has a lot of functions that will let us actually you know do a lot of stuff like create any and like uh, create uh, save data in our database delete data from database update data in database like full you know create update delete and yep and read so that's about the mongoose and we need to get the joy so basically when we create a new model in the mongoose mongodb database and what do I mean by model? Okay, uh, I think I need to explain you this one second. So let's first of all make sure that you have installed MongoDB Compass in your web in your uh, in your PC. We'll just say download MongoDB Compass for Windows, and you hit enter and go to the first website here, and just uh, download the .exe file. You will find it here. You can get the stable one, and that's more preferred. Just click download and uh, install it 
and after the installation is done what you have to do you need to make sure you put your mongo okay i will just show you that thing you will need to go to this pc c drive and there might be something like what we say program files no where is where is mongodb Mongo, okay here is mongodb in the program files in the server we have a mongodb you need to go to the version you are you want to use go to bin and now copy this whole address and click on the address bar click copy now uh, hit uh, windows key and, and and type environment it is the system environment variables hit enter and now go to environment variables and the below system variables click on the path click edit and click new and paste that address down below as you can see i've already done that so i don't have to do it again but you need to do this okay so and after that click okay and now you should be able to use mongodb in your pc actually now we will open our mongodb compass so this is what it looks like you need to just uh, click on connect and after clicking on connect you need to go to databases and you need to click on create database and the name of the database is just going to be we'll say it has shopping with uh shopping website and the collection name let's say it has default i will just explain every single thing so you don't have to worry about nothing so what exactly is the model stuff like that okay so model actually like you know you will create a new collection collection is just like table so you created a new let's say new collection it's a collection of users and it it follows a specific model like specific structure what it wants what it, this collection wants it wants a username a password uh an email okay it wants those three things that are necessary to get okay it needs those those three things and let's say we specified something more we are saying like yeah username should be minimum of three characters maximum 20 characters password should be minimum three characters maximum nothing and email should be of type email like we need to say if else if else if else right but that's when the joy comes in play all we have to do is just you know make a joy structure joy schema and we have to just say uh, we have to pass it into a structure we want to get and then whenever we get the data from the user what we have to do all we have to do we need to pass we need to put joy as a middleware of for you know checking the data and if any errors were detected it will show us the exact error it will just say yeah password is needs to be minimum six characters if the user might have typed a lower pass you know uh, uh, characters less than six of length so yeah that's why joy is a important part while making a making a website using mongodb or you can say mongoose well that's about the joy now we need the json web token so basically json web token i uh, okay do we need to explain it right now okay so json web token is an important part of for authentication okay so basically let's say the user logged into a website how will you know that user logged into a website like you cannot just create a new way you know you cannot create something like is logged in the web in the local storage is equal to true because you will never know if the user is logged out or not and like everyone can log into your uh website like that so what we do we make a token using json web token it will encrypt it will give the user a, a, a little bit of you know encrypted text the text will contain two sec uh, one secret key and it will contain something like you pass it it will probably we will probably only pass id in here so we will you know uh, the id can be visible to the user because user can actually see what's a uh, pass it in the json token but he cannot if the user try to change the id and try to save the change id token uh he will get logged out because we will have a validation on the server end so we will not let the user manipulate the json web token so whatever id he is logged in to will be there as long as we want like we can have an expiry time for the json of token and even even he tried to expand that expiry time the json of token will change a little bit and it will not match with the json of token that was in our that was you know uh, in our server and we will just log him out that's as easy as it gets right so that's about the json web token and then we will have the bcrypt bcr ypt js so bcrypt js just encrypts your password it actually hashes your password so there are two types of things most people uh, think that encryption and hashing is the same thing but no like encryption is a thing like you will have a string that you will encrypt encrypt means you're encrypting something and when you put uh, some you know secret key 
you will make some secret key with that encrypted text it will give you the actual password that it was like let's say hello you encrypted hello with some secret key it will just become uh, a b c d l f g uh, blah blah stuff like that and when you decode it like decrypt it with the secret key it will just give you back hello but that's a security threat what is best what is good with bcrypt.js is that it will hash your password it will not encrypt it what does hashing means hashing means it will you know hash your password it will you know uh, save your password in different things like abc uh, like lfg lmpq and the thing is you cannot reverse the hash and you know how we know that if the pass the hash password is equal to the real password the user is giving what we do we will just save the hash password in our, in our database and once the user is trying to log in we will just hash that password also that the user is trying to log in with and we will compare both of the hashes we will see if the hash is the same then we will let the user log in yes that is true the hashes will be same if you're putting two uh, you know same a type of string with same type of values it will give you the same hash the hashes will not change if they would have changed we could have never let the user log in because the hash would never have been the same thing so that's about the encrypt js and uh, do we need anything else well we can use another, another thing that's called as morgan so morgan just notifies us about like what type of requests are being made to the server and morgan is only used a while we are developing something and only in the developing mode once you have your site ready you want to you know get it to production level that means you actually want to deploy your website somewhere online that you want the users to actually use it so you can just disable morgan that time so you will you don't have to see what type of requests are being made to your website so that is about the morgan and we need to use the body parser so body parser helps in a few ways uh, what it helps in is that like you know you're trying to console log a requested body only the express.json will, will not actually help you to re, you know console log requested body it will only help you to console log like using request.body.username it will show you the value of the username but it will not show you how what, like the objects that were that we were received uh, from the client side so for that you need to use body parser well i was going to use cookie also like cookie we were just going to save the token in the cookie but the issue is while you're making something like in you know, a react app or some kind of web applications uh, using cookies are a little bit uh, a lot more complicated than just using uh, cookies in normal uh, HTML size static size right like that so we cannot use cookies we will use instead like you know we will save a token inside the local storage and uh, I think that's okay with us right so well yeah that was probably it the these are the dependencies that we need we may just hit enter now and let them do the work Alrighty, so these things are ready to go, right? Now what we will do, we will just click on the server and we will click, uh, I create a new file. We'll name the file with index.js. So index.js will, will you know, work as a main file for our server to run. We will run our server in this file and then we can connect other routes from other folders, right? Here we have to say, first of all, constant express, we have to decide, uh, you know, define our express uh, variable it will have require express all right and after the look okay, one second let me just show you something like we do we don't have any work with the express itself right all we have all we are going to do we are just going to say yeah call express like that then we will say constant app is equal to express okay express as a function so what is the easy way of doing it we can just name it as app require express the function of express right so it will work the same way now we can put a comma here we can say okay we can say something like uh so what what, what does comma help us in like when you're putting comma here it means you don't have to write the constant again you don't have to write the constant again you can just define some variable like that and it will be read as a data type of constant itself not as a data type i'm going to say like as a property of uh, constant itself okay so constant is uh, some kind of variable that cannot be defined in the future again you cannot change the value in the future so that's why we say it's a constant it cannot be changed okay when you say uh, when you say uh, body parser just name it anything require body parser we need to get Morgan 
Okay, Morgan is called to require. Morgan. Oh, we have another trick of doing those things. A little bit more simpler, okay? Other than just defining them, what we can say, we can just say app.use. We'll put them as a middleware, right? We'll just say require body parser. Now in here, we usually say body parser or JSON, so we can just say dot JSON. So this thing will actually work as like we are saying body parser dot JSON. All right. Now we need to say a comma. So once we when we put a comma, which means we are passing another middleware. So we are giving it a body parser dot JSON middleware. We'll give it the require Morgan. Okay, we need to get the dev Morgan. So we need to say Morgan and the function dev. Uh, dev actually just means like you know we want this thing to run in the development and it returns whatever requests are being made here. We also need the dot env. So we'll just say uh, require dot env dot config. So dot config will actually do what it will just make sure that this dot env our e dot env uh, variables are available throughout the, this whole server throughout in the whole server folder. Okay. So that's the work for the, the, the .env. And we also need to get the mongoose, right? So, yeah. Now, I think that's it for the app.use. We need to have our mongoose server also running. So we'll just say, uh, require mongoose.connect. It needs to connect with the mongodb, uh, colon slash slash. Here, you, here, mostly people will put localhost and then uh, their port. So as you can see that here, if we go in localhost, in the MongoDB compass, they will, they're, showing, they're just showing the host as localhost column 27017. But there are some issues with using the localhost. So instead, I use just the 127.0.0.1. Uh, localhost just shows me some like uh, timeout after 10 seconds. So I use... 127.0.0.1 colon 27017 and then we do a slash and here we need to specify the name of our database whatever we created so the database name was shopping website right so here we'll put shopping underscore website okay well that's it that's it that's all we have to do we don't have to do nothing after here we can put a callback function so we can just read the callback function will only run when we have successfully connected with the database so yeah, you can do stuff like that. If you want to make sure that you, you know, if you the connection with the database was failed, you can put something like you know, you can just say let connected uh is called false, and here you can have a callback function. You can just say once it's run, once it connected is equal to true. So you know, like the database has been connected successfully. Then you can move ahead with the following thing, but. We are not going to do anything like that, so we will just skip that thing for now, okay? After doing this thing, what are we going to do? I think I made this thing a little bit more complicated than they should have been, right? Okay, I can just say, comma, body parser, Morgan. Morgan, uh, we'll say dot env is equal to require dot env dot config. Okay, actually, we don't have to pass dot env in the app as a middleware because it should be only used in the server itself, not the app, right? Okay, here we'll say body parser and uh, get body top parser dot json actually. So we can just say here body parser dot json. So we can just get rid of it from here. We need to, we need to get the body parser and we need to get the Morgan. We can just say Morgan uh, the function with a dev. So we can just say yeah, get the body parser and get the Morgan right. Okay, that makes good sense. So we have our mongoose here. We can instead of defining there, we can say mongoose is equal to require mongoose and here we'll just say mongoose.connect right. You don't have to you know put semicolons after anything because it's all fine and after doing that we'll define another thing as our port is going to be called to either port 5000 or port from process.env.port 
So what do I say? Process.env.pod. So maybe you might have uploaded this website on somewhere online on some hosting. And what happens if the port 5000 was already busy with something else? And uh, what will happen? They will uh, add a new port in the .env file and they will they will probably know that you have put in our process.env.pod. And then your website will use that port as its default server port. So it will just start the server on that port. Well, that's the advantage of just putting extra code like here process.env.pod. Okay. Now we need to define, okay, app.use our router, like, you know. So we'll say if someone make a request to slash API, we want to do what? We want to say require. Okay. For now, let's just say, don't say require. We'll say get the request and then get the response. Get the request and get the response. After getting a request in the response, what we want to do, we want to just say resp uh, response to send back request. Okay. So what I'm actually doing here, let me say hi plus request. So I'm getting the request and the response from the server, from the client. Okay. Let's say someone goes made a any type of request on slash API, like any type of request. Okay, we have not defined what type of request, right? App dot get. So someone made a get request on the slash API. So what we want to do request is like the data that we get from the client, and the response is the like the data that we get from the headers. Like maybe in the response we can have the we can set the cookies to the user, we can actually send back to response to the user. So a request is like whatever we get from the user, and response is what we give back to the user. So that's the thing about request and the response. Now at the end we'll say app dot listen. That means we actually want to start up a uh, server and dot listen on port. So that means on port we want to start up a server. Now we will just say npm install nodemon. And then your nodemon will be installed successfully. I'm using nodemon, okay, nodemon version. I'm using nodemon 2.0.7 because the latest version had some bugs. So if you can, you can just type uh, nodemon. You can just say npm i nodemon add rate of add rate of 2.0.7, and it, it, will, it will install my version. So yeah, we'll just say nodemon, and you can see our server is running fine. I go to localhost 5000 I get to see nothing because yeah I have not defined any port for the slash default one because we will be using react js for that we will only use uh, the next the node js only for you know making some post requests or something you know we want we, we, like whenever we want some data from the database or we want to update something in the database or we want to delete something from the database or we want to add something in the database only for that reasons let's say we will go to slash api right what will happen at that time? Localhost 5000 slash API. Hi, object, object. Because it didn't get anything, right? They're saying object, object because we didn't give it anything. Uh, what can be the thing that we, we might have given it? Let's say test is equal to elderly. Okay, it, it still says object, object because we're not specifying something. We'll just say this on dot string phi. If I refresh. Converting some cross structure to JSON. Oh, it's not it's not actually JSON type, right? So we're just being an object object. Now how we can just say it? I'll just define it like that. Okay, I need to say request the body. So I'm just giving by request the body to the user. And maybe here I can use JSON dot Stringify hi something okay okay we will use not the uh, not the string if not the body request dot query hi test l done you can see what I would typed in here or uh, is being shown here so what does this mean request dot query so request dot query a uh, the dog query will actually read whatever we give it in the URL itself request dot body will only work if this the type of request is being post request 
So that's when we use request body. And JSON stringify will actually allow us to see our JSON without you know having it break down in pieces. Well, it will work like this also, you know. But here you can see our HTML doesn't really understand. It will just say, yeah, we got something like object object from the server because here it also didn't read it properly. So we need to say JSON or stringify. So we actually convert this JSON or object type into a string. And when we give it back to our client side, it will know, okay, so this is this test I learned, right? It was not just object object. Well, that was it for this video, guys. That was the backend setup. And here you can see how is Morgan helping us. The Morgan just shows us what type of request is are being made to the server. It just shows how much time it took for the you know, request to complete, what type of a URL the request was made on, what type of request was it, and what was the status of the request. So guys, that was it for this video. And I hope you enjoyed this one, because we are going to enjoy a lot in the future, definitely. Uh, now, in the next video, we'll probably do the front-end setup, because this was just an example how to set up our backend. And uh, we'll see more about how other things go. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, make sure to subscribe because we are coming with very great content. Okay? I will be completing the series as soon as I, as I can. And I will just say git add git comment part 4 git push origin main. So you can anytime. Okay. Origin uh, master. Okay, what the hell happened? main to main non fast forward so i will see the issue but you can anytime just go to my github repository and see if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel subscribe now like this video share this video comment down below how is the series going on and what type of series you want in the future well guys that's what it i will see you in the next one have a good day bye bye